Well, eight members of the Blue Light Brigade will now find themselves being transported in the back of police vehicles. Suspended VIP protection members who allegedly assaulted three people will be arrested. The officers were caught on camera when traveling on the N1 near Four Ways. Now, they were part of Deputy President Paul Mashatile's security detail. Hardy Jokas is at the Santon police station now and has more on this story for us. Uh, Heidi, uh, thank you so much for crossing with us now. Of course, you will be able to tell us what exactly and when exactly um, these officers will be arrested. Yes, yeah, so we're not exactly sure what time uh, these officers will be processed here at the Santon uh, police station. All we have been uh, told, um, Baron, is that it could be any time from now, where we do understand that eight VIP protection uh, members will be uh, processed here at uh, the Santon police station, and they will be charged uh, with assaults. I think let's just read what the Independent Police Investigative Directorate issued uh, late last night. They've indicated that uh, I would be effecting an arrest on the eight members of the VIP protection services uh, today on Sunday the 23rd of July uh, investigators will be, be processing the eight VIP protectors at the Santon uh, police station following authorization by the director of public prosecutions in this regard. The eight members will be held at the Santon police station until appearing at the Randburg magistrate court on uh, Monday. Uh, so we do understand that they will be processed here. Um, what I can also tell you, Baron, is that we do understand that all eight of them have indeed been suspended. Uh, we do know that uh, Deputy President Paul Machetele did come out indicating that indeed those members do belong to his protection unit. They were suspended almost immediately after that uh, video started circulating. Um, and uh, they are obviously now going to be arrested and charged probably with assault. We'll obviously see what else uh, the charge sheet does indicate. But uh, the time has come for these eight uh, VIP members to answer to what exactly happened on that day. We do understand that, um, you know, when you see those blue lights, you are expected to move out of the way. But many citizens have indicated how as much as they want to uh, move out of the way, uh, they, you know, sometimes it's impossible. It's physically impossible. You have to just give it some time. Uh, and even if they were possibly moving out of, not moving out of the way as quick as wanted by these VIP protection units, um, you know, was that really warranted for those members to be assaulted in the manner in which they were assaulted? And Heidi, like you said, the time has come. And I wonder if, you know, there wasn't uh, this big pressure from, uh, you know, the public um, in this matter as well, if anything would have happened in this regard, because we know it took, it took a while for this to actually take shape. Yes, certainly. Um, Baron, I just keep looking around because I'm, I'm not exactly sure how they are going to arrive at the police station, what time they are going to arrive at the police station. So I just want to make sure that I, I don't miss anything. But mm. uh, most certainly, there is definitely pressure. And um, you touch on an important point about the fact that even um, the deputy president himself uh, wanted to distance himself from that kind of behavior and that kind of mm. conduct. You know, it's one thing to, you know, call out p uh, motorists for not moving out of the way. Um, at the end of the day, they are transporting the deputy president. There's high security. We do understand that. But the fact that they took out those guns, I think, uh, and literally pointed them out and assaulted those motorists um, and those citizens. You know, the question is, was that ne actually necessary? Um, the way th the video shows it is there was a lot of kicking and a lot of shoving that was taking place. Um, it's rather unfortunate that we were unable to engage with those in that vehicle because we do understand that there are trainees of SANDF and they were actually instructed not to engage with the media as this is being dealt with. But it's going to probably come out in this court's appearance um, and this court case to say what actually happened and possibly hear the side of um, those that were assaulted, the victims in all of this. But uh, back to your question, there was definitely pressure. There definitely is pressure uh, for something to be done like this. We cannot be treated like this as citizens. Uh, as much as we don't know the full story and the full extent, I think many would argue that no matter what possibly could have happened on that day, it does not warrant such force being used. And, and, and Heidi, do we know if they will be appearing in court next week? 
No, they will be appearing in court tomorrow, Monday, mm. uh, the 24th of July. We do understand that they will be appearing in the Ramberg Magistrate Court. And there's also a lot of talk around how they are only being processed now. Um, how many weeks later from when the actual incidents happened and how many weeks later after they were suspended? Why are they only being processed now? But that, of course, we'll have to uh, ask uh, IPAD in terms of uh, what exactly this whole process entails and whether or not, uh, uh, you know, why they had to wait. Was it because of investigations underway or, or what exactly was going on? But at the end of the day, uh, Baron, they were suspended almost swiftly after that uh, video started circulating. I wonder, Heidi, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, police brutality in the South African context. I mean, we, when we hear police brutality, we think of the USA, um, especially in, in this regard. But, but do you think this is a, a, an issue in the country, you know, generally speaking, that should be addressed more, more, more often and also to, 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 to take, uh, you know, more responsibility from our leaders to actually look at this uh, as a huge issue in the country? Yes, I think uh, initially there were reports that or the, pres the deputy president himself said, I was not in that vehicle. And then uh, I think there were some reports that alluded to the fact that he was indeed in that vehicle. And if he was, that makes it even more concerning that a deputy president uh, would allow such conduct to, to unfold and happen right in front of him. Um, of course, we'll have to triple check that uh, to find out whether or not he was uh, indeed in that vehicle. Um, it's very concerning, uh, uh, Baron. You know, mm. I, I must indicate that uh, outside of being a journalist, I, I sometimes panic when I see uh, the police because you don't know what you are going to be met with. You don't know uh, what exactly is going to happen if there's going to be aggression that is used. Um, as much as they are trying to do their jobs, uh, you also need to have some level of respect. I am a citizen at the end of the day. Those uh, individuals were motorists, they are, they are motorists, they are citizens, so there should be no force like that. So there definitely needs to be something more that's done about how police officers conduct themselves and how, how VIP protection units also uh, conduct themselves. Uh, I've had many encounters, and I'm sure my colleagues uh, can also vouch for this. Whenever we are covering a story with the president or the deputy president, you are literally shoved around. You are pushed. You, you can actually be physically picked up and moved because they don't want you anywhere near the president. Uh, and sometimes you ask yourself, is that really necessary? Um, I'm just here to cover my, the story. Uh, I'm not you know, mm. anywhere near the president, but there is a lot of force that is used. Yeah. And uh, the broader conversation is, is that actually necessary? Um, obviously, they have, they have a duty to protect the, the president and the deputy president. Uh, but this example and this, this story is a typical example, rather, of how it's just overprotection and yeah. clearly gone wrong. And it is a very important point that you mentioned there because then the bigger question is also, you know, what kind of um, training do our cops get in this country? And, you know, it's one thing to put, you know, more boots on the ground all the time, but what's the, the, the quality of training that our police officers do get? Uh, thank you so much, Heidi Jockers. We will definitely uh, get back to you as soon as, you know, we have any more updates about um, that particular situation. Those um, officers are arrested, and like Heidi said, it is high time uh, for this to actually take shape.